Hi, my name is Robert Fry. I'm teaching this course on Combat Weapon System Engineering. Now, before we get started, I'd like to provide you with an overview of the course and the topic areas that we're going to be covering. Um, I have on the screen here nine modules, the principal modules. If we have time, we'll cover some additional material. But let me quickly give you an overview of the material we will be covering. We begin with Module 1, which is the first thing we'll cover this morning. And in Module 1, we'll provide you with an introduction to combat weapon and weapon systems. Uh, we'll talk about the major elements that comprise a weapon system. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to define what a, what a combat system is. I want everybody to have an understanding of what it is, because unless you have a firm definition in your mind for what a combat system is, we really can't go on and talk about the rest of the content of the course. Uh, module 2. Uh, we'll pick up and talk about the anatomy and operation of a combat system as opposed to talking about its elements and contents we're going to talk about the dynamics and how all these pieces work together in concert to yield, up, to yield the functionality and the usefulness of a combat system. Moving on, uh, section 3 we'll cover system level trades and the procurement process for a combat system. What are the phases that you need to go through to acquire a complex combat system? Initially, there's a need, there's a threat, there are missions you'd like to meet and address. Um, foremost, once those are defined, you can start to develop concepts for your system. Beyond that, you start to develop prototypes and models. Uh, we'll talk about the importance of the role of modeling and simulation tools and how these modeling and simulation tools change during each phase of the acquisition cycle. Uh, going on to the next section, Section 4 will focus in on the Aegis weapon system. Talk about all of its contents, uh, the weapons, the, the, the missions areas that, it, that it's meant to address, uh, ballistic missile defense, air to air warfare, and other things that the Aegis weapon system does. Moving on to Module 5, uh, we'll do a deep dive into the Navy missions and threats and talk about what it is that we're going against, the adversary, uh, the operating environments and the places we'd like to operate the Aegis weapon system at. Modules uh, 6, 7, and 8 really come together as a unit. Um, the idea is that we're going to describe the fire control loop and its elements. We begin with module 6, which are the shipboard sensors. That is, how does a ship acquire information from its environment? Uh, module 7 takes off from that and says, well, what are the weapon systems we have access to? Uh, things like missiles, guns, the close-in weapon system, other things, other ways of projecting force and energy on board the ship. Finally, Module uh, 8 brings these together in the context of the so-called fire control loop. How do we develop a weapon system that balances the information it brings in with its ability to project energy and power? Very critical aspect of any combat system and any weapon system in general. True, going from a complex missile system down to a simple bow and arrow. The principles are really the same. Moving on, the last section we'll cover is uh, Navy communication systems. We'll discuss uh, the TATL system, uh, TATL J, uh, Link 11, Link 16, Link 4, their role in combat systems and in warfare in general, and how these communication systems are really important in linking up the various platforms that comprise the weapon system.